Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, Master, grant that I may never speak so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul.
Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Harvest Festival. It is a strange time to be celebrating Harvest through a broadcast service, but it was really important to be able to come together to give thanks for God's goodness and also to give thanks and pray for all those who work on the land. Even last night, I could hear the tractors working till late to make the most of the conditions, and we have so much to be grateful for. Today's communion service will be at Kirby Underdale, um, also harvest themed, and that will be at 11.15. And next week, there is the online service at 10 as usual, and then communion at St Edith's at 11.15. Let us pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we receive the symbols of the harvest. As we receive this earth, this water and these seeds, let God the source of all things be praised. Let us glorify him that he has given us both instinct and the need to join in the work of creation. Let us praise him for the work of preparation for harvest in all its wonderful variety. God will give us his good gifts. Our land will yield its fruit. Lord, how various are your works. In wisdom you have made them all and the earth is full of your creatures. Mm -hmm. 
as we receive this produce. Let us rejoice in his abundant generosity. Let us be glad in its beauty and determined to see the relief of those in need. The land has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. Shout with joy to God all the earth. Break into singing and make melody. As we receive this shepherd's crook, let us give thanks for human care, labour and steadfastness. Let us give God praise that he invites us to be his co-workers and stewards of the creation. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. The meadows are clothed with sheep, and the hills are girded with joy. God's mercy and peace be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Yours, O God, is the vineyard and its harvest. Yours the kingdom of justice and peace. You call your people to tend its growth. Bless the work entrusted to our hands that we may offer you an abundance of just works and a rich harvest of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, Thou silver moon with softer gleam, O oh, praise Him, O oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, oh praise him, Alleluia, thou rising morn in praise rejoice. Lights of evening find a voice. O oh, praise him, O oh, praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And tender heart forgiving others take your part oh sing ye alleluia ye who long pain and sorrow bear praise God and on him cast your care him, oh praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all things their Creator bless, and worship 
worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him, hallelujah. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Testament lesson from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, when you enter the land that I am giving you and you reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall raise the sheaf before the Lord so that you may find acceptance. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall raise it. On the day when you raise the sheaf, you shall offer a lamb a year old without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the grain offering with it shall be two tenths of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil, an offering by fire of pleasing odour to the Lord. And the drink offering with it shall be of wine, one fourth of a hin. You shall eat no bread or parched grain or fresh ears until that very day, until you have brought your offering to your God. It is a statute for ever throughout your generations in all your settlements. And from the day after the Sabbath, from the day on which you bring the sheaf of the elevation offering, you shall count off seven weeks. They shall be complete. You shall count until the day after the seventh Sabbath, fifty days. Then you shall present an offering of new grain to the Lord. You shall bring from your settlements two loaves of bread as an elevation offering, each made of two-tenths of an ephah. They shall be choice flour, baked with leaven, as first fruits to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the hour of its setting. You make darkness that it may be light. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. 
Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to begin by reading you something I came across this week, which really hit me quite hard, really made me think. The more often we see things around us, even beautiful and wonderful things, the more they become invisible to us. That is why we so often take for granted the beauty of this world, 
the flowers, the trees, the birds, the clouds, even those we love. Because we see things so often, we see them less and less. These are the words of an American businessman, Joseph B. Worthling, and we all recognise the truth of them. It is all too easy to almost sleepwalk through life, getting on with things but not paying them much attention. And this can be even true of our relationships with those closest to us. <clears throat> To some extent, it has to be this way. We need to do some things on autopilot or we probably wouldn't even manage to get up and out on a morning. But the risk is, because we see things so often, we see them less and less. Harvest is a wonderful time when we can allow God to wake us up and actually see the things around us that we take for granted with fresh eyes. Our Old Testament lesson from Leviticus describes the offering of the first fruits to God and then 50 days later, Pentecost, the offering of new grain in the form of two lovely loaves. The offerings were to be made from the very best of the harvest. In doing this, the Israelites would have been reminded not to take their harvest for granted and also reminded of their dependence on God. We have an echo of this in the harvest loaf that is baked each year and in the things that at a normal harvest festival would be offered at the altar. This offering is combined with our prayers and songs and also taking time to pray for those whose hard work ensures we have enough to eat and drink over the course of the coming year. The writer G.K. Chesterton said, When it comes to life, the critical thing is whether you take things for granted or take them with gratitude. Harvest reminds us to take things with gratitude every day, to wake up, open our eyes and see the wonder all around us. Sadly, sometimes our eyes can be opened in this way when life knocks us and chips away at our complacency. The pandemic has certainly done this. Even the humble loo roll became a prized possession rather than something we don't think twice about. But it has led people to recognise afresh our interdependency. We absolutely need each other if we are going to flourish. From the farmers and others who work to plant and harvest our crops, those who collect and distribute them, those who work in shops, and the list can go on and on. We also recognise that this interdependency stretches far beyond these shores. I take for granted my cup of tea on a morning, but I am able to enjoy it because of people harvesting tea in Assam, Sri Lanka and Kenya the blenders working in this country, and then those who deliver it. And I'm also thankful for the rains and for Yorkshire Water, who enable me to drink. And then there's the electricity bought to boil the kettle and the dairy farmer who provides me with the milk. I could go on. Once you start, you realise how interdependent we really are. And even a taken-for-granted cup of tea can actually be a springboard to prayer for the very many different people involved in its production and also for the earth, without which we would have nothing to enjoy. 
But alongside this, we also become very aware that it isn't enough simply to have our material needs satisfied. We know that we can eat and drink, but we will always be hungry again. And we can also be hungry for other things that make our lives worthwhile and worth living. Warmth, affection, being part of a community where we feel we belong, feeling valued, and also a sense that all these things woven together give us a sense of meaning and purpose. And this deeper hunger and this deeper need comes out really powerfully in Jesus' words in this morning's Gospel. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. As we look around, we can't help but be aware of people's fear and uncertainty, something that can be masked perhaps ourselves by having a drink, eating chocolate cake, or buying something to cheer us up. But that fear is actually deeper. It is a hunger for the perfect love of God that casts out fear, the love that meets us in the darkness with God's light and feeds our deepest hungers, a love that is for now and for all eternity. So this harvest time, let us allow our eyes to be opened and to take things not for granted, but with gratitude, so that even the things we see often, we say, may see more and more, not less and less. So each day, perhaps you could pause, and as you take something every day in your hands, use it as a springboard for prayer. It can even be a humble cuppa. But alongside this, think how you can respond to God's love and generosity in the care you offer to others. Recognising that none of us live by bread alone. We need love, belonging, meaning, warmth and humour. We can offer those things and be those things and share these things with others because God in Christ, Christ the bread of life, has first shared them with us. Amen.
Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people, your will may be done, according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, hear our prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers and distributors, all that helps us to know that we depend on each other. Enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, Hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and salvation, starvation. At this time, we pray especially for those countries coping with COVID who don't have the help and support that we have. By the grace of your spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty, and make us wide stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes, and all who are known to us. We pray for all in hospital with COVID and those who are supporting and helping them. We pray for all who care for them. Give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died whom we entrust to your eternal love in the hope of resurrection to new life. We also remember those whose anniversary occurs at this time. Lord of all peace, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, Others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, hear our prayer. And in the quiet, we pray especially today for Archbishop Stephen, being enthroned this afternoon at York Minster, praying that he would be granted wisdom and grace in the ministry entrusted to him. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfil your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed, and the whole earth give praise to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together for the coming of God's kingdom in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
and a closing prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, holy God, creator, redeemer and life giver. You have spoken the world into being and filled it with wonder and beauty. For every blessing we have received, we give you thanks and praise. Blessed are you, holy God, for people of every language and culture and for the rich variety you give to life. For every blessing we have received, we give you thanks and praise. Blessed are you, holy God, for Jesus Christ our Saviour, truly divine and truly human, living and dying for us and going before us to heaven. For every blessing we have received, we give you thanks and praise. Blessed are you, holy God, for your spirit, a fire of love burning in our hearts, bringing us to faith and calling us to holiness in the church and in the world. For every blessing we have received, we give you thanks and praise. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered you thanksgiving for your love in creation. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us, and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hope you have a lovely day. The forecast doesn't look too bad. So if you can go out and enjoy a walk in our beautiful villages. May God who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the sky, who leads the lambs to pasture and the deer to water, who multiplied loaves and fishes and changed water into wine, lead us, feed us and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator, now and through all eternity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon each of you, upon your homes, and all whom you love, today and always. Amen. Thank you.